Hi there, so we've been using perplexity to understand and identify opportunities in the stock market. One of the things that happened over the 15th August Independence Day speech by Prime Minister Narendra Modi was that the country is looking to revisit the GST. And one of the key objectives to understand is that why is it being revisited? What is the expected outcome? So that is one line of questioning that we'll be covering in this particular session and the other is that what opportunities and which sectors open up because of this change so first and foremost that's what i started with i simply asked uh, you know like in between a private consumption and the government aided uh, you know uh, consumption like what part of gdp is the private consumption and what part of the gdp is the government consumption and perplexity got me all the data and kind of indicates that as we see, uh, you know, the private consumption is not consistently growing up. Well, you know, it went up in the overall this thing, then it started coming down and there's a tapering. Now, what is expected is that ideally the share of the private consumption in the overall GDP should continuously increase. And the government-aided uh, uh, GDP should reduce. But that's not exactly what was going on over here. And to a certain extent, there is contraction that is being observed. Uh, if you look at the overall share of private consumption as a percentage of GDP. So there was a reason that, you know, like uh, government wants people to spend more, live a better life. And that's why they are expecting that, yes, if you bring down the GST, the companies will benefit, they will be able to pass on that benefit to the end user and when they will pass on the benefit to the end consumer, consumer will buy more and in the process more tax will come and companies will benefit and the overall GDP still continues to grow at a much faster pace and at the same time the tax collection will in fact go up. So what what is intended is that you know like for certain sectors bring down the GST from 18% to 5% and for the sec certain sectors bring bring it down from 28% to 18% and create one more special sector as 40% slab. Now when you get the benefit of 7% uh, especially on things like the daily needs primarily you know uh, or for that matter consumer durables like everything that you buy in electronic shops now, if that is brought down from 12% to 5%, people will be able to afford more. And when they will be able to afford more, there will be more business, the companies benefit, people benefit. And because the, the government is still getting 5% on a higher volume, the overall GST collection will still remain stable is what is expected. And the primary beneficiaries, um, so in, in summary, what is expected is that for the consumer durables and essentials, it will come down from 12% to 5%. Uh, for uh, automobiles and certain other sectors, Siemens and all, uh, it will come down from 28% to 18%. And this is more like discretionary spending, but still people who are considering buying a motorbike or a car and they were not in a position to buy, now will take that decision with much more confidence. And there will be one more tax lab that would be created in the process, which would be for certain items, which would be, you know, highly luxurious. And that would be 40%. And one of the gripes is that tobacco companies might come under this and maybe even the wine and whiskey kind of companies. Now, th this is all the data that is there in context of the GDP and how it has been, you know, like changing in terms of the growth and how the private consumption is still the highest as part of the overall GDP and that is what it is indicating that at a two decade high of over 61 percent of the total GDP but probably the government wants it to be higher because that's that's when the country really progresses instead of being a freebie uh, uh, economy if the private consumption is aiding the economy that is a much better sign and that's what is being attempted over here so that was part one of it and the key point is that yes, it comes down into these slabs, so 5% and 18% and there's one more section of 40%. Now, which are the companies which are expected to be the primary beneficiaries, the sectors? Now the primary sectors that we're talking about over here are automobile, FMCG, cement, consumer durable, 
banking and finance and it has also given us very clear indicators now how that cost how the gst is being changed from 28 to 20 18 percent for automobile fmcg is 12 percent to 15 per 5 percent cement is 28 to 18 consumer durable again 28 to 18 and banking and finance will have a different kind of a taxation that will work under it they are expected to benefit from this overall you know uh, more uh, consumer-led spending which requires financing and then it uh, i had kind of queried that which are the companies that will be that are uh, going to benefit so it has given a list of companies from automobile sector fncg sector as well as from cement consumer durables and banking and then i when i was looking at it what i found missing was that certain companies which are into vehicle finance and all are missing so i further built on it and i kind of asked it to give me vehicle finance company and also the data was not complete if you look at over here it is showing na na another thing that i would like to point out is that you have to very specifically ask that you screener as your input for like the data that i asked for as the p and the quarterly sales growth so that it becomes uh, you know more reliable and that is exactly what it has done and in the next table it brought me all the companies that expected to be part of this and it gave me what is the current price what is the pe ratio and what is the quarterly sales growth and this when i was going through this i further wanted it to have another aspect of the data that is include the 52 week high and the 52 week low and that is even better when you are trying to make decisions that which are the companies that can be shortlisted to consider for swing trades or investment so here is a final list which it came up with along with the data which is current price dates how much it went up today how far is it from its all-time high and how far is it from its 52 week low not all-time high but 52 week high and low and what is the PE ratio and how is the quarterly sales growth has been and then there can be projections also on top of it so all the data comes in over here and you can easily identify which are the ones which can be possibly beneficiary now at least for me sriram finance sounds very good because one area this is purely in a value segment and uh, the p ratio looks pretty good it's not very far off from its 52 week high but still when i look at it it's fairly so the 52 week high is 790 730 and right now it is trading at 626 and it's not very so it's somewhere in the median range and even in terms of the growth if you look at it quarterly sales growth has already been at 21 percent it is definitely looking one good investment now if i look at imami versus dabur versus hul imami is definitely looking much better in terms of the overall uh, expectation of growth because it's uh, something which is relatively on the lower end of the segment and that is the one which is uh, more price sensitive and uh, it is also in terms of its 52 week high it's still a long distance from there it has uh, broken down and it is giving you are good when we look at it from a peer perspective so these are some of the companies that you can look at now uh, not specifically any recommendation for investment but this is how you can use perplexity to understand a macroeconomic trend and then also identify that because of that macroeconomic trend which are the companies which are the sectors which will benefit and then which are the companies that can benefit and you can get to see all the data in one place and further build on it now if i want to really query that can you tell me on more on shriram finance based on last three quarterly results and analyst reportings now it will get me all of that i can understand what is going on in this company and if i find it useful then i can build my position so the key point being that it is one single source which can help you start analyzing the macroeconomic trend identify sector identify a basket of companies and then further analyze how that particular company which you are focusing on has performed in the last few quarters 
and what's going on over there. So this is how you can use perplexity more. We will continue to cover. I definitely plan to understand Sri Ram Finance and few of the companies that we saw on the list better and I'll be sharing whatever I understand and learn from it. So subscribe and like if uh, you find